This is one of three stories that Twain wrote that he claimed were told to him by a conversation with a Mr. McWilliams who he met on his travels. As I mentioned in one of the other stories of this uh, type, I suspect that it's actually an homage to a friend of his named McWilliams that he knew while he was working at the Buffalo Express. This one is Mrs. McWilliams and the Lightning. It was my experience that mainly dogs had a deathly fear of lightning, and until I married my wife, that is, she was otherwise a strong and bold woman. She could face a mouse, a spider, or the devil himself without batting an eye, but her unreasoning fear of lightning was pitiful to see. One night I awoke to her cries wailing in my ears. Mortimer! Mortimer! Where are you, Evangeline? I said, for she was nowhere to be seen. Here, in the closet. You should be ashamed of yourself sleeping like that with such a horrible storm going on. But dear... It's unreasonable for you to expect me to be ashamed while I'm asleep. Give me a moment to wake up so I can become properly ashamed. I'm sorry, I said. I didn't mean to make light of your predicament. Then come out of that bed instantly. Have you no care for me or the children? You know there's no place so dangerous as a bed in a thunderstorm. But I'm up and out of bed trying to find a candle. Don't light a match, are you stark raving mad? But I can't see anything, I said as I struck the match. Put it out immediately. You know that nothing attracts lightning like a light. Now see what you've done. No, I don't see what I've done. A light may attract lightning. I I don't know. But I do know it doesn't cause it. And if those shots were aimed at my match, it was blessed poor marksmanship. For shame, Mortimer. Here we are in the very presence of death, and you use such language as that. Did you say your prayers tonight? Because if not... Oh, surely we're lost beyond all help. How could you neglect to say your prayers at a time like this? But dear, the times were not like this. When we went to bed, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. How was I to know that there'd be all this rumpus and powwow What about a little slip like that? I haven't missed saying my prayers since I brought on the earthquake four years ago. Mortimer, how can you say that? Have you forgotten about the yellow fever? Evangeline, you're always throwing up the yellow fever to me, and that's perfectly unreasonable. My devotional slip that evening could never reach as far as Memphis. I'll accept the earthquake because it was local, but I'll be hanged if I'm going to accept responsibility for every... Mortimer, you aren't standing in front of the fireplace, are you? Yes, dear, that is the very crime I'm committing. Don't you know there's no better conductor of lightning than an open chimney? At this, I moved away from the chimney and began singing to myself in order to calm my nerves. Mortimer, if I told you once, I told you a hundred times. Singing causes vibrations in the atmosphere which interrupt the flow of magnetic vibrations. What on earth are you opening that door for? Goodness gracious, woman, is there any harm in that? Harm? There's death in that. Hurry and shut it or we'll all be destroyed. Mortimer, did you order that feather bed as I asked you to? Not yet. 
Why are you thinking about that during such a treacherous time as this? If you had a feather bed now, you could spread it out on the middle of the floor and lie on it, and you'd be perfectly safe. Why don't you just join me in the closet here? Well, I tried, but the closet was nowhere near big enough for both of us. But I brought her the candle, which she explained would be safe enough if it was in the closet. And I brought her a German book, which purported to be a scientific treatise on the nature of lightning. It says here that the safest place for you is to stand on a chair in the middle of the room with all four legs in glass tumblers for insulation. I set up the chair with glasses from the kitchen. I'm having a little trouble with my German, Mortimer. Does Einwig mean away or around? Around, I think. Okay. Then you're supposed to put something metal around you. Put on your fireman's helmet. Buckle on your military saber and get up on that chair. I did as she commanded, just as another flash split the air. Away! It also says something about ringing the church bells. Go grab the dinner bell and keep it ringing. Once again, I did as she said. After I stood on the chair arrayed with metal and ringing the bell for seven or eight minutes, a lantern was thrust in through the open window and a number of men's heads filled the window space. What in the nation is the matter here? Asked my neighbor. There is nothing the matter, my friends, just a little discomfort on account of the thunderstorm. I was trying to keep off the lightning. Have you lost your mind? It's a beautiful starlit night for the 4th of July. Did you think to look out the window and watch the fireworks? One after another, those watching lay down on the ground to laugh. And they laughed real hard. Two of them died. <laughs> <laughs>